What's up, everybody? It's Sound Author. And today we're going to take a look at Myth, which is Dawson's new synth. Very highly anticipated. I was lucky enough to get in on the beta process. And uh, I've made 16 patches for the factory library, uh, which is the first time that I've actually made presets for a new synth, which is very cool. Um, <laughs> Myth is very unique. Um, I've actually sat down here and... Uh, started recording this video several times to try to explain uh, the nonlinear synthesis concept of the instrument, which I'm not going to lie, took me a minute to figure out and wrap my head around when we were in the beta process. Uh, so here we go. <laughs> Okay, you can drag and drop a sample directly into the iris, or you can open a sample within uh, the factory sample set uh, that you have some samples that are bundled with the instrument. Uh, and it'll resynthesize that sample. Now, the point is not resynthesis, okay? This is not a resynthesis synth necessarily it, it it does resynthesize the sample but that's not really the the point um the point is to use these transformers down here okay which are these different colors okay one will impose like like a saw wave characteristics onto the resynthesized sample okay or the characteristics of a string or brass or like a, a square wave or the characteristics of oscillator sync you know those, those almost like harmonic footprint it'll the, these transformers will impose that 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 timbre onto the resynthesized sample okay and uh i'm just going to go ahead and walk you through my presets uh to give you an idea of what's possible here okay so Lots of different colors, lots of different textures. Mod wheel and aftertouch on pretty much all of these. Okay. So I think this is a chord patch. That's one cool thing in here is that there, uh, in the ARP section, you have the ability to, you know, get an ARP going, of course, but you can put a chord in here with a chord module, and you can actually put a scale on top of that, which is the scale of C, basically, but this is all diatonic, so... Very cool. So that's very musical. I like that a lot. Okay. And so this is another chord patch. So now we're into pad territory, of course, which is my specialty.
So let's use the macros, which I've assigned to these transformers. And these are a lot of fun to color with. Okay, the green one I think is brass. Square wave. CPU intensive with my uh, OBS running. I'm gonna take it easy a little bit. So that's a very nice pad, and it's very pad heavy. I find it's very good for beautiful, lush, organic pads. those transformers again it's a lot of fun to color with especially if you have faders assigned to the macros so these macros I've made sure are very centered around the, the transformers because that's the whole point of myth colors and it's almost sounds like distortion the transformers do kind of have a distorty influence sort of a distorty sounding distorted sounding kind of uh, character when they kind of impose that harmonic footprint or whatever you want to call it onto the resynthesized sample. And of course, you've got gorgeous effects. I think some of these effects might be, a, I believe that the clouds uh, reverb is in, in uh, Abyss or one, another, I think a couple of Dawson's other instruments as well. Nice arp. It's a very unique instrument, and even though it might take a, a moment <laughs> to get your head wrapped around the sound engine and how it works, once you kind of get to know it, it's really special. So that's a pretty little ARP. Ah, this is my favorite. The favorite one that I've done so far. Aftertouch makes this thing sing. This one is a lot of fun. I can get lost playing with the transformers on this one. I even have a fader for my aftertouch. Yeah, like I said, so if you've got some faders or some knobs on your MIDI controller and you've got that all mapped to the, these macros, man, you can just color. 
you can you can just whoops my microphone there you can just do a lot of coloring so another big cinematic pad Macros again. After touches the vibrato. Transformers, man, they get in there. Okay. just so much here there's so much in this instrument this there's too much for one video it's a lot there's a lot in the oscillator section to filter the fx there's a lot but we're just kind of walking through these patches you can see a lot of random modulation per note random modulations i believe the limit is up to nine math Modulators. And all I've really used the math modulator. I'm not exactly sure why it's called math, but it's, I like to think of it almost like in a, a similar terms uh, as uh, Yuhi's mod mappers. It's just, uh, it's just kind of almost like a table of values that you can sweep. Uh, you can, you can draw inside of here, okay, and the and the input from zero to one will, as you can see, the result that it has uh, up there where it says math one, it's just sweeping through that, right? So you can make it steppy if you want. All right, you can you can do what you want there, but uh, I'm just using that basically as a basis for these random these random values, okay. So I'm just messing around with mod wheel after judge all I'm just all over the place. Uh, 
And I think this is another R. Really played around with amplitude and to make it very randomy. texture in there. so much variety out of just one patch to, to the point where it almost sounds like you've mixed patches and you're crossfading between two different patches but you it's just like there's a lot that can happen here this is more they're more of a basic sort of a vibraphone kind of sound Ambient shimmer and reverb effects that Dawson makes is just awesome. Like Love came out uh, not long ago and it's just, oh, he's so good at effects. And of course, where would we be without the obligatory 80s patch?
can you tell I can't play? <laughs> I'm too busy with sound design. One of these days I'll learn how to play. So anyway, I believe that's it. Uh, factory, sound author. Yep, that's the last of them. So I think there was one thing that I wanted to stress in these patches. I can't exactly remember where it was. It's a pretty good example. Yeah, that's a good example. Okay, this parameter here, let me just remove the modulation from math one. Um, and let's remove the modulation from math eight and let's just. This parameter, you see how there's these different colors in the iris? This parameter, it like, it crossfades in between them. And I believe that these, these colors represent different parts of the sample's temporal evolution. Or different parts of, there's, there's harmonic content within the resynthesized sample at different places in time. represented by color. And if you modulate this parameter, it just, it, it, it's a good visual representation, how you just kind of dance through those harmonics represented by color. And that's a really good way to get this synth to come to life, is to play around with this parameter. It's a very cool parameter. And this is basically like a smooth parameter. When it's all the way down, it's kind of rough. You turn up smoothing, and it does what it says it does. It's smoothing it out. Of course, this is uh, your FM depth, your FM operator pitch, modulator pitch. It turns the amount of the FM up just a little bit. So you can hear what's happening. These two parameters kind of give you some atonal characters. Some kind of like harmonic stretching going on. Definitely some atonalities that are introduced. That's for when you want to really do, I, in my opinion, the, these two controls are for when you really want to do some, some uh, dissonant atonal stuff. But anyway, there's myth. And I think it's pretty cool. Uh, and it, it warrants itself to a lot of experimentation. Uh, it's pretty bold. Uh, it's, it, it, it definitely took me a couple of days just to wrap my head around what this thing was and what was going on with this resynthesis engine. And then, then we remove harmonics from the resynthesized sample and impose these... Uh, harmonic characteristics onto the temporal evolution of that resynthesized sample with these transformers. I mean, it was just, it, it took a minute. It, I think, I think there are some people who might scratch their heads with this, but, um, all in all, once you get to know it, once you cozy up to it, um, it, it's actually pretty cool. It's a pretty cool synth and I was happy to make some sounds for it. So, uh, there you go. Hope you enjoy, uh, I hope you enjoy Myth, and I hope you get a kick out of the presets that I made for it.